Smogger in Windsor, and uh, I'm showing this. This is Larry Flint. I was flown out to his home during a campaign in 83, and um, this is in April of 84, Hustler Magazine. So that seems to be something from outside, right? So anyway, um, <laughs> you get the drift, don't you? Uh, anyway, this is when he endorsed me. Uh, I was in his home. I'd never met him. I knew I had done a book on programming and mind control by doctors and agencies. And he was shot during that time in Lawrenceville, Georgia. And uh, I lived in Marietta. So the guy was programmed to shoot him and kill his attorney. So uh, Larry McDonald, that he mentions here, was in on his shooting. March the 6th of 78, um, his plane goes down three years later. And these, I'm leaving out what was done to me during that time. I put it on YouTube and Facebook, and all the media knew it. It's because of my kidnapping and who I am and who did it. Uh, but I told about that. And when, by the way, I never, I said that, never met Mr. Flynn. Um, but I knew that the person was programmed that shot him. I'm flown out there during the campaign to replace Larry McDonald as a special election and uh, hit the plane he was passenger on, uh, went down in the ocean. It was en route from uh, Juneau, Alaska to Seoul, South Korea. And it was uh, written, even a book about how odd it was. This was a very um, skilled pilot for KAL, and he just wanders uh, off his flight path into Russian airspace, and they shoot him down. The, the Soviet or Russian MiG shoots him down. Uh, so this can be done with exactly what I've been talking about: mind control. Um, <laughs> all the U.S. marshals or, or marshals on a plane uh, can't stop it. It's something that is invisible weapon and you get to the pilot or the air controller or you can get to the uh, marshal and have him come out shooting so there you go you've, you've got the scenario and um, you can go to now you can go to uh, mind control and google it and you can get MK Ultra and a lot about mind control but I had no knowledge of then I will say this a um, Flint since he called me during the campaign, I was flown out there. I had written him a letter. I had no idea because uh, I had to put on the side of the road literally. Antifreeze put in everything in the book done to me after trying to get the book published. And uh, I never met Mr. Flint, but I wrote him. I didn't have any idea that he would call me. I got a call, and that afternoon I had a ticket out to his home in Bel Air at the time. His limo driver picked me up, and he was a black limo driver and a close friend of Mr. Flint up until he was shot uh, March the 6th of 78. And um, he had Mrs. written on a big sign, and he came to me and asked me if my name was Childers, and I said yes. And um, he gave me his card and told me as he drove to uh, Mr. Flint's. He said, I haven't been able to get through to him since his shooting. He said he was my closest friend, and I did his work. He always called him. He said, will you give him my card and ask him to call me? He says, why? Since then, is this the only time that they've called and asked me to um, pick someone up, and that was me, and I was carried out there. I went into Miss Flint's home. And the first thing he said to me was, you don't have to tell me anything about yourself. I already know everything there is to know. And he said, they meant to send you back a vegetable. So by back, I found out a little later, back to England. I'd been kidnapped. My father's Edward VIII, who was forced out. And just like me and my kids, total lies told about him. Uh, he was married to Claudia O'Keefe, my mom, from Madison, Wisconsin. And antifreeze, a vegetable, is what he meant. So he knew about me being force-fed antifreeze and should have died in April Fool's Day of 80. So I'm going to jump from that to... Uh, 
you know. <laughs> now, these are supposed to be considered your nice people here. I came to uh, Roanoke simply to get off the side of the road and have a place to be and not get raped and uh, killed and all that. Now, then, these are the people who came in here about that time. He's being honored. That's his name. Uh, you know, these people wouldn't give me the time of day, except I do know John Edwards, Senator from Virginia. Tim uh, Kane, I know of. Uh, he certainly knows about me because of the uh, Ian Zoring's murders that happened, the murders that happened that, by the way, he didn't do. Uh, the Hasem murders and Elizabeth and Jens. He was a German diplomat son. We got Mark Warner's office um, was represented there, and uh, someone from Bob Goodlatte's office, who's over your intelligence, and I believe over. Um, I can't. There's another agency he's over. He he's right next door to uh, uh, Gun Edwards, the state senator. And uh, he's, uh, Goodlatte is over the Intelligence Committee, and I said that, and one other one. I, not, this tape's going to run out, too, and I wanted to read something. Anyway, these people, Patel, and these aren't the only ones. I've listed names before on here and even put back up on it uh, to support what I'm saying. They've engaged because law enforcement has told them um, in what's happened to me, and that's... A, when I get a place to be, and around here, they own just about everything that I can, if I can even afford it. Now then, they own plush and everything. And it started when uh, years ago, in about 95, I paid, I said this, a month's rent. It was hard for me to get. My jobs were shut down, and it was winter. And Patel owned the budget inn. I paid for a month. A couple of days later, after I told him I'm allergic to chemicals, they come in and they're going to uh, paint and remodel. Well, it would have killed me, it just about made me so sick, so I called the cops. Cops told me I had to leave. I have done nothing wrong. I have no access to an attorney. I, uh, If I had an attorney, they'd make a fool out of all these people. But instead, they can come out and handcuff me this minute. Nobody's going to step up to the plate and stop it. And I'm going to follow this. Uh, Patel are the other ones. They own the Maverick. They just bought the Quality Inn where I managed to stay for 13, 14 months to March of this year. And I asked myself when I was run out of there, they were remodeling. It was bought by Shaw. And I don't know if Patel was part of it or not. But uh, they certainly know all about me and that I have paid him a month's rent back years ago. And the same thing happened. I couldn't get my money back, and I was told that it went so far up that I might as well forget it. Uh, so anyway, here these people are honoring him while I've walked the side of the road, and uh, there's not anybody, the media, WDBJ7, all of them, 10, um, know all about me and, and the mind control murders I've written about. And that one of them was Larry Flint's attorney. That guy was programmed to shoot him. Now, I was going to read this because, and I'm going to follow it up on the next tape, uh, because these are total lies. I've never met District Ranger Pat Egan. In fact, this was written uh, a few years ago when I first came here and took to the trail, which is hard and cold and froze just have a place to be. Uh, I will say this, that Goodlatte I just mentioned, Bob Goodlatte, the one that's over the Intelligence Committee now, who I thought might be, I've been in his office, John Edwards, they totally know who I am, what's happened to me, but Goodlatte was over the agriculture back when this was written, and um, up until not too long ago, maybe a year ago, he was over the agriculture, which is the Rangers, who's the law enforcement, the law, uh, forest rangers, Jefferson National Forest. That's where I've lived and crawled and begged. That's what I'm close to now with what's going on to me now and the people that own where I'm at now is this bunch of tales. And they can do anything in the book. They've gotten wealthy off of me. <laughs> exactly.